I am going to share with you the biggest secret in the history of ballet. Seriously. Okay? Let's begin with that. The purpose of training, placement, right? This method and, and the methods before it, Soviet and so forth, has one aspiration to it, okay? And that is to train in your body and in your mind a quality of movement that you can't help but to present, right? It becomes intuitive. It's just you and how you move. Doesn't even matter what kind of choreography you're doing. It begins obviously with a strong coordinated body turnout and all that. But that's just the beginning. After that, we get into the very interesting stuff. And what is that stuff? That stuff is taking the aspiration of the training and crafting you in your body and your mind and everything into this quality of movement that people can't help but fall in love with. It's like when you're watching stand-up comedy and you laugh. You can't help but laugh. Either you laugh or you don't laugh. It's, it's, it's automatic, right? Your mind just does that. Your mind perceives a stimulus of some kind and it reacts. So we, we cannot help how we are emotionally affected by things. But what we can do as artists and educators is understand how to craft our art and tune it to that quality that audiences, whoever the audience is, can't help but feel you and to love what you're doing. And that's the secret, that's the art. It's the art of falling in love with the performer, the performance, the choreography, all of it. So how do I know when a dancer has reached that, or at least the beginning of it? Because in the studio, once we do all the hard work, and I set steps on you as a dancer, I know when I fall in love with your movement and the way that you do it. That's how I know that you're ready for the stage or for the screen and for audiences, because I feel it. Now I'm probably more sensitive than the average audience member, and it has to do with my understanding what's going on, but just as a human being, I also cannot help but be affected by it. Now, for me personally, the downside is I also can't help but be annoyed when I don't see it. It affects me emotionally and psychologically when I see things not, but that's not the point. Ballet is the art of the audience falling in love with you. That's what it is. And there's a very specific way to craft that, and it is a craft, you know? Ballet dancers are, are handcrafted, so to speak. This is not a, an assembly line kind of, kind of art. It just isn't, right? I mean, the initial steps can be that way, right? Fundamentals, blah, blah, blah. But then you get into the real magical stuff. That's where I come in. So I said all that to say this. I've been thinking in, in, intently about ballet for the last six months or so since we moved here, whenever that was. And of course, since then, we've had the pandemic, and now we have um, the, the protesting and, and all of these things uh, that are going on. I think they're all related to some extent. I mean, they overlap. So my thinking is really focused over the last, let's say, three months, two, three months. And here is where I am at. And I have an offer. I have an offer for the ballet world. I, as far as I'm concerned, the slate is clear. Clean slate between myself, this is how I feel, and the ballet world, specifically New York, because we've had an interaction. And I'm going to suggest that you 
consider feeling the same way about me, that we just clean slate, clean slate. Because in, in point of fact, I think that's just what's happened, not between us per se, but just in the world. We are really in a different world right now. I mean, it's the same people and the same kind of things, but we're thinking differently. Things are, are just different. So my proposal is that we just embrace that fully and just head right into it together. So I reached out to Misty the other day, a few days ago via email. <laughs> I think I'm blocked everywhere else. Um, and essentially said that, just, it was very brief. I just stated that I feel like I want to reach out and with an offer that if there's anything I can do, which obviously there, in, in practicality, there is a lot I can do, that I'm open to that. Obviously, not only she, but all the other dancers all over the world have been without class and rehearsal and all that for, for three months it's been, right? About three months. So, you know, something really extraordinary has to happen. And after thinking about it and battling with myself and my, you know, myself, but basically as a man, it means you're battling with your ego and all the other things that you, that it's just a constant thing. And this is where I've arrived that I, I, I feel let's, let's just start with a clean slate. And I don't feel like we've had really any problems, uh, frankly, not, not anything serious. It's painful sometimes getting to know people, you know, particularly when there's intensity there and the situation is unusual. So whatever feelings I've uh, expressed or, and received and so forth, I kind of chalk that up to just getting to know one another because it's, it's a very unusual situation. It was unusual before the pandemic and before the rest of this. So I'm just going to chalk it up to that, getting to know each other. That's part one. Here's the specific offer I'm prepared to make. Now this is aimed mostly at American, America and New York specifically because of practical reasons, but I'm the rest of the world should consider itself included. I am prepared to offer choreography and coaching and training of teachers and coaches and dancers to create performances and products for under the conditions we're living now. So that would be digital, digital content mainly. And then that can transition to live. Uh, the, the digital content can just be crafted a little bit for the stage when that becomes possible. That's not the, uh, the generous part, what I want to offer. This is. So let me just tell you how the last few weeks has been, the last month or so. So we, we began offering content on our institutes, just simple classes, right? And it has been an extraordinary response. And I'm talking about not just the reaction to it, but the sales, the sales, right? We, we were selling a lot of classes every single day all over the world, every continent other than, than Antarctica, obviously but every other continent on earth were selling content. So I know how to create content and to create a digital platform and it's, we're just gonna grow it from here. That is what I'm offering. And I'm offering it under some very unique conditions that you're not used to hearing. So for the companies out there, and right now I'm saying specifically Americans and a little bit specifically New York or related to New York, I will offer you all of that without talking about money because obviously <laughs> money is the problem right now and it's a problem that I can solve. Absolutely. So I'm not going to go into the details. That would be a conversation to have in person probably. But I will say this. We're building a digital platform that I, I, I'm certain is going to be widely supported in a little bit of time. It's already quite supported. 
And because of that, I can create content and offer it on our platform, which means I don't, it's, I don't have a requirement of money specifically, certainly not a high amount from a company because all the companies are going to be, are just hurting tremendously. Step one is to survive this, to get through this and then to thrive. And I'm in a situation where I can make that happen. Not for every company, obviously, probably not more than two or three. So the deal is simply this. I will provide a variety of things creatively, pedagogically. And in exchange, I will record, you know, some arrangement where I'll record whatever seems reasonable to do and offer this on our platform, Ballet Conrad platform. And that's the deal. It is an opportunity to be sure that your company will make it through this rough patch and will thrive as a result going forward. Obviously there are details and provided we can work those things out. Once I were to agree to a specific project or set of projects, I can promise that it will work out. Your company will make it through this financially and otherwise, and will thrive going forward. Because what I can do is create content that people want to pay to see, both artistically and pedagogically. We've started now with the pedagogical, which I think is the harder sell, right? Selling courses and classes is, is, is harder because people need to take action. Presenting really, really top quality art and entertainment is a much simpler sell. That's my offer. And I think that you should take yes for an answer. And by you, I mean the ballet institutions and uh, Misty as an individual. I think you should take yes for an answer. So to just to be, encourage you more, I have already said yes. This is me saying yes, I will, I will do this for, you know, the one, two, three company, whatever, whoever wishes to, to do this. It might just be one, I don't know. And it will work. It will absolutely work. Okay? Because truthfully, going forward, ballet companies need to build out a digital platform to supplement revenue, etc., for the live performances and so forth. And their schools and all that. All those programs. Because this is what I'm doing anyway. So let me be clear about one other thing. This is not about me. It, it really never has been. For me as a human being, I, I'm kind of content just to do my own thing. That's just me personally. But upon thinking about it and considering everything, and a lot of it has to do with you guys, by the way, your comments and emails, because there's a theme that runs through this of why are you not working with the established big companies, obviously they would benefit from it. Yes, they would. And to some extent, probably I would too. I think there's just a lot more to be gained for everybody by cooperating versus staying on opposite sides of things. But that is, that is not my call to make. I've just made an offer. I've already said yes. It's a question of just, you know, sitting down and talking about it. But that is up to them. And to speak directly to you, it's up to you. It's up to you to take yes for an answer. So my decision to, to, to offer this is, is really just, it's a kind of a greater good line of reasoning versus my own personal aspirations. It's, it's really more about that. So you shouldn't hesitate to reach out to me, right? Send me an email, whatever, however you want to get in touch, because I've already said yes, okay? Take yes for an answer. Let's make sure these ballet companies, as many as we can, survive this and thrive as a result. Because if there's one thing we can all agree to, all of us agree, we might have little disagreements about, you know, 
technique, whatever, philosophical disagreements, you know. But what we all agree on is we want ballet to make it. I want all of the companies to make it, right? So we, we're already in agreement on that point. It's just a question of how and just me being the weirdo that I am, I have this extensive business background. I still am involved in that. And I have this piece, the ballet piece, the creative piece, the pedagogical piece. You put those pieces together with the institutions and you are, we are unstoppable together. So think about it. But I think timing is important. I think we need to do this very, very soon. Right? I mean, we all know the longer this drags on, the less likely ballet is to do well in this country especially. Okay? We all agree. I think we're all in agreement. Clean slate. Let's move forward. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay?